how I'm going to transition to Lewin anytime now. Ba da ba 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 da. Mr. Lewin! Hey, oh, hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Brotherhood Without Man. It's your favorite full spoiler reread podcast of George R.R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series, Reading A Clash of Kings. As always, I am Zach, and sitting here with me is my co-host and elder brother, Nate. What up? I'm Nate, and if you've joined us before, thank you for coming back. Baba. If you have not been here before, we are full spoiler. Full spoiler. We end, uh, give the end of things. We don't end things. Check the expiration date and throw us out, because we are spoiled. Uh, um, I guess. Yeah, cool. Word. So, <laughs> if you joined us last episode, you were treated to a special guest interview with Joe Buckley, at Sir Buckley. Hey. And if you joined us before that episode, we were reading Danny 2. Danny and Karth. Danny and Karth. Yeah, so Danny was in Karth, and <laughs> she was just kind of exploring, getting a lay out of the land. Uh, by, Everyone as, was groveling. Yeah, as shown to her by the merchant prince Zaro Zoendoxus and Pyat Pri the warlock. Two most trustworthy people. Yeah, she did receive a warning from Quaith not to trust those two. And she rightfully thought not to trust Quaith either. Jorah Mormont brought her a sailor who delivered the news that Robert Baratheon was dead. And according to this news, Ned Stark was still shackled beneath the Red Keep. Yeah. Um, Danny is very happy about this news. Yeah, she thinks this is her opportunity. Yeah, so we'll catch up with her later on. Um, we're reading Bran this episode. Bran 4. And so last time with Bran 3, there was the Harvest Festival Harvest feast. Harvest feast, get down, get down. Yeah. Spooky, scary so skeletons. We had a, <laughs> a string of chapters where there were feasts, and that was one of the... Starting one. Yeah, Winterfell is popping because everyone wants to come and pay homage to the Starks as Rob has been declared king in the north. And so Bran has been leading that charge alongside Lewin and Sir Roderick and doing well with it, but still struggling with his wolf dreams and everything. And in the last episode, we were at the Harvest Feast. And essentially, there was a lot of politics around the Hor- uh, Lady Hornwood's lands. Yes. And Ramsay Bolton was. Uh, the bastard of Bolton was sort of eyeing those hungrily and amassing men, and but she it was, was kind concerned. Of sh- it but was it was shunted. Yeah, yeah, it was shunted to the side and said, you know, when it w- if it happens, we'll help and we'll take care of it. And the feast continued, and we were joined by two new arrivals to Winterfell: the Reeds, Mira, and Jojen, from all the way down in Greywater Watch, which is where House Reed is from, and the Cranig men, as they're called, the Mud Men to others. They came and swore an old oath to the Starks and Bran and vowed to serve him loyally um, as they, as their father had done yeah. to his father. And that chapter closed with them meeting Summer in the Godswood and him kind of feeling Bran out. Yeah, Jojen the, recognizing the, the, Bran and, and acknowledging how powerful he is and how angry Shaggy Dog is. And We open this chapter... Similarly to how that one closed, uh, with... we open this chapter with how I walk in my fucking door every single day. Yeah, no kidding. Which is with a big happy puppy, 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 puppy boy just playing his heart out. Yeah, and so Mira is circling Summer with her spear and net out, and she's jabbing the spear out, and Summer jumps out of the way, goes to leap in at Mira, who tosses her net up, and Summer lands right on top of her, and they kind of roll for a second. And it's fucking adorable. Yeah, Mira's laughing, Bran shouting that, Summer won, Summer won, and Jojen's like, no, no, he's caught, look. And uh, yeah, Mira had managed to capture Summer in this net, but laughing, she goes over and quickly lets him out. It's a game, they're playing. Yeah. And So it was funny, because she, she, before she actually got him out, she wrestled, like grabbed yeah. a hold of him, rolled him up on his, unlike Beric. He hates it when you get him feet up and are holding on to him. So I could just Squirmy. picture the whole thing. Yeah. But yeah, so she frees him and... Uh, Bran calls Summer over and as Summer comes bolting over, Bran just says, watch, and grabs a hold of Summer's neck and just gets, I mean, kind of pitifully dragged across the ground. But for him, it's kind of exhilarating. And then him and Summer end up wrestling and rolling and it ends up with Bran pinning Summer and just kind of patting him saying... That he's a good wolf. Yeah, yeah. And Passive Mira asks... What? Passive aggressive. Who? You. What? And Mira asks Bran, doesn't doesn't Summer ever get angry? 
Like, aren't you worried? And Brent's like, nah. Now with me. Mm-mm. You know, and he mentions that once in a while, you know, Summer will get a get some of the clothes, but he's never drawn blood. And Joe, well, Mir is like, uh, well, maybe not your blood, but Summer was ready to fuck fuck me up just now. Yeah, she says if he had gotten through my net, and Brent says he wouldn't hurt you. He knows I like you. And this is when we learned that most of the other lords had left within a day or two of the feast, but the reeds had stayed and become Bran's closest companions. And so, yeah, they're, they're, they they've become a little posse, this this foursome here of Summer, Bran, and Hodor, I guess. So Yeah, so Hodor's around yeah, here. Yeah, so Summer, Bran, Hodor, Mira, and Jojen are kind of just out chilling by the weirwood and enjoying themselves. Yeah. Uh, Bran finally has companions, people who aren't judging him for his legs and that he can talk to. Who aren't Freys. Who yeah. aren't Freys. So we learn a little bit about Jojen here, that uh, Old Man has gifted him the name Little Grandfather. Fuck yeah. Which is, I fucking love Little Grandfather. I love Jojen Reed. Um, and because he's so solemn and he's, you know, the character we love for all the right reasons. Yeah. Uh, Mira, however, reminded Bran more of Arya. She could run and fight and throw as good as a boy. She was older than Arya, almost 16, and Jojen was older than Bran as well, who at this point confirmed just had his ninth name day pass. Nine. So he's nine. He's nine years old. But they never treated him like a child, and that is the most significant thing. We know Lewin and Roderick have been trying yeah. to keep him in the dark as much as possible. And the phrase treat him like a little kid. And the phrase you know. are just fucking assholes. But that. he wishes that they were their wards instead of the Walders, because fuck, fuck yeah. the Walders. And he struggles, squirms over to sit and rest against a tree and refuses Mira's help when she offers, which kind of shows his determination. In summer, when Bran finally sits upright, lays his head in Bran's lap, and they're they're just in chill mode. And he asks about net fighting, how she learned to fight with a net, because that's not taught anywhere around when Winterfell. Yeah, he's never seen that before, and she t- tells him, our father taught me how to, to fight with a net. Holland motherfucking Because Reed. Holland Reed's a dope-ass bitch. We have no knights at Greywater, no master at arms, no maester. And Bran asks, well, then who keeps your ravens? And she says, ravens can't find Greywater Watch no more than our enemies can. And Bran's like, huh? And she's like, it moves. It just moves. That's all. Yeah, now, Bran thinks that she, he can't tell if she's pulling his leg or anything, but even in our real world, there are castles and, not necessarily castles in our real world, but little floating islands with buildings on them. I can't quite remember the name right now off the top of my head. Are those uh, uh, flotillas? Maybe. I don't know that word, so... I think that might be like a party barge or something. Yeah, basically, then, but, but less partying. Yeah, less partying. Um, uh, maybe. But they... And I so have tech- Google literally at my fingertips, but I'm just too lazy to... Yeah, no, reach over and grab your yeah. phone. And so he, she's not pulling his leg. Like, the, it does move around, and it is hard to find for that reason. And so it makes sense, but I was also... You, you think that's the only thing there is about Greywater Watch is that it's just on some on some shifting... Land. Yeah, I do. You don't think there's anything mystical about it? Mm-mm. I think that there the the green site might be there, but I don't necessarily think that this day and age that their keep has anything to do with magic or mysticism. I mean, with the the gray green site association, I always just think like, is it being coordinated? Is that how they're moving? Like, why they're moving it? Right, is right. these green seers see where is the best positioning to do? I mean, I I don't know. We haven't been there. Yeah, I don't think but it is. But I like to think it's a yeah, little sure. more mystic than. Um, there was some other point I wanted to make there. Uh, I thought it was interesting that that likely means that they don't send ravens either. No. Nah. Which would explain a lot of why we haven't heard from fucking Howlin' Reed. Well, yeah. Because ravens can't find him. He doesn't have ravens. No, the ravens, ravens just show up and it. drop some bombs on him. Yeah, you because know. the only information they need comes from their green side. Yeah. And Bran, said, not knowing if she's teasing him or not, just says that he would still love to visit once the war is done. And she says, well, of course, my prince, you'll be most welcome then or now. And he's like, fucking now was never even a concept to me. So perhaps I will run that by Roderick when he gets back. And then this is where we learn that Roderick has currently been in the East trying to set the rights to rights the troubles there. Yeah. So which started at this point. Immediately after Lady Hornwood left, she was intercepted by Ramsay Snow and married that night by that him. That night. Now, that led Lord Manderley, Lord Too Fat to Sit a Horse, to take her castle 
as a means to protect her stuff. Her holdings. Yeah. yeah. Which which is what he wrote in his letter to Roderick, and Roderick was just as pissed at Manderly as he was at the bastard. Right. Uh, Manderly saw an opening and took it. Ramsey saw, saw an it. opening and took it, but we know uh, from Lady from full spoiler reread that lady hornwood ends up chewing her fingers off and not doing so well from this point yeah, forward it, it goes bad very quickly and for her. we knew it would and now roderick's over there trying to play fucking catch up right. like a dumbass and yeah and this is gonna have a lot of ramifications here because then reek is gonna start handling some stuff yep. so he's gonna be kind of floating about the countryside where theon will eventually run into him all that kind of stuff so ramsey snow's a fucking player now yeah um because of their inactivity Right. Because of their refusal. And he, in this thought, because uh, he's thinking about asking Roderick to let him go, he thinks, because Lewin would never let him leave. Lewin's not going to let him go. But at this point, we learn that Jojen has been sitting under the weirwood tree, and he says that it would do Bran a lot of good to leave Winterfell, and soon. And this is where Mira explains, My brother has the green sight. He dreams things that haven't happened, but sometimes they do. And Jojen even cuts her off in the... Not sometimes. Like, they... they there is no sometimes. Yeah. Uh-uh. They and then happen. Bran notes that there is a look shared between them. Him sad, her defiant. This is an argument they've had before. Yeah. A million times where he's just saying what he... He, he knows that he's... inevitable. He knows he's going to die, yeah. and he's told her, and she is hoping beyond hope that he's wrong about it. That she can change it. Yeah. yeah. And he tells... Jojen says that he'll tell Bran more about his green sight if Bran tells him about his dreams and the gods would grew quiet at that and he thinks of the crow and the golden man i don't have dreams he says lewin gives me sleeping draughts that give me dreamless sleep do they help mira asks him and he's like but sometimes and then she's just she cuts straight through the bullshit all of winterfell knows you wake in the night screaming and sweating bran the women talk of it at the well and the guards in their hall do you think that's true yeah. Does he wake up screaming and thrashing? I th- yeah. Haven't they mentioned that before? I I mean yeah. Because whenever I think he after falls, his coma. Well, no, he's done it a few times after but... he falls in his dream. He wakes up screaming from the fall. Hmm. I don't know. I just it's interesting that that's the talk around Winterfell. I would think that people would be used to it by now. Hmm. As I take a sip of my water, and yeah. Nate says nothing to fill the silence. Well, what the fuck? You didn't warn me. <laughs> Uh, Jojen asks Bran, tell us what frightens you so much. And Bran's kind of getting a little pissy at this point. He says, it's always only dreams. Lewin says dreams might mean anything or nothing. And Mira's just adamant. My brother's dreams are different, yo. Like, yeah, these I'm are telling you. Ones. And so he tells her um, that three-eyed raven, like, that he got sick as a kid. And the three-eyed raven came to him. And that he was dreaming of a winged wolf chained and the three-eyed crow was trying to break the chains, but couldn't. And Bran immediately is like, oh, shit. Did your crow have three eyes? Because he didn't actually say three-eyed yeah. crows. But, yeah, and Trojan's like, uh, fucking duh. This is when Summer raised his head and gazed at the moon man with his golden eyes, which is just interesting. It's like the old gods are listening to this conversation too. Yeah. The old gods were growing quiet. Summer's perking up. And Jojen says that, yeah, he was little with gray water fever when the crow first came and visited him. He, they thought he was dying. He was dying. And that's when the crow first visited him. And Bran just starts blurting out everything about the fall, the fly or die, his coma. Only when he woke up, he was told he'd be able to fly, but he woke broken and couldn't fly after all. And Mira says that it, he can. Like, if you want to fly, you can. You are the winged wolf, Bran. The crow sent us to break your chains. And Bran's like, oh, is the crow at Greywater Watch? And Jojen says, no, the crow is in the north. And he's like, oh, at the wall? And he thinks of John. Oh, I always wanted to see the wall. That'd be dope. And Mira says, beyond the wall. Now, this part, he Jojen had told Howland Reed about his dream. And so Howland sent them to Winterfell. Yeah. Like, it was shit luck they showed up during the harvest, because how would they know? They don't get ravens. It's not like somebody sent them shit. Granted, I guess they're, they might have figured it out by the changing of the weather, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, so I just always like that he was sending them. And so Bran then asks him, how does he break the chains? 
the that are holding the winged wolf and i i was curious about that because i've always whenever i think of breaking the chains you think danny because danny's breaking the chains mm. and i've never actually noticed it here and it's this winged wolf. It's very, very kind of similar to that myth, myth, mythological dragon creature. And breaking the chains is never something I've attributed to Bran until this line here. Yeah. Do you think it has anything to do with a, a similarity or a mirroring of Danny? Well, I didn't go with the Danny one on this. I went Tyrion's angle. Because Tyrion, we've also been getting an awful lot about chains recently. Well, and for different reasons. Well, supposedly. Different reasons, yeah. but it's still. Uh, I mean, it, it, even Tyrion's could be kind of compared to Danny's of this fight for freedom, fight for slavery, breaking the chains type thing. And so I, I don't know if there is any correlation, but I was just kind of became aware with that specific line how do I break the chains that. Danny has that symbolically with slavery and Tyrion right now. That's his fucking ace in the hole is his yeah, chain. chain. And so I just thought it's interesting that there's now three characters that are chained chains, in yeah. some way. And so, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So uh, Jojen's response to how he breaks the chain is open your eye. And Branton's like, dude, I'm fucking looking at you, bro. Like they're <laughs> open. And he goes, uh, two are open. And he point he counts them because little grandfather, and that's what they do. And finally, he he says, "You have three. The crow gave you the third, but you will not open it." And he had a slow, soft way of speaking. With two eyes, you see my face. With three, you could see my heart. With two, you can see that oak tree there. With three, you could see the acorn the oak grew from and the stump that it will one day become. With two, you see no farther than your walls. With three, you would gaze south to the summer sea and north beyond the wall. Now, I just really like the the way he speaks and the way that Martin writes the way he speaks with... I mean, yeah, you'll be able to see life cycles. Cycle. But it's very much him mentioning you'll be able to see north beyond the wall. Bran already has. Yeah. Like, north and north again beyond the wall. Yeah, but he has once in a state of panic. Exactly. And then saying, you, you can do that when you want, when you open this right, eye. Right, right. And so Bran is not, I think part of it is because he remembers seeing north beyond the wall vaguely. And so he nervously kind of smiles and is like, that's, a, yeah, you know, it's all just bullshit, though. Let's talk about, like, fucking... You know, crocodiles and and yeah, and Summer other stuff. stands up and yeah, he says, uh, "Let's talk about wolves or lizard lions." He asks Mira, "Have you ever hunted a lizard lion?" We don't have any here. And Jojen, still... well, yeah, because she starts to, you know, no, yeah, they li- they're down south. And, and Jojen's, Jojen's like, like, "Nah, did you dream of a lizard lion or a wolf?" And at this point, Bran thinks he was making him angry. I don't have to tell you my dreams. I'm the prince. I'm the stock in Winterfell. And Jojen just continues, "Was it summer?" And. uh... The night of the harvest feast, he asks. You dreamed you were in, you were summer in the godswood, didn't you? And Bran just shouts, "Stop it! Stop it! Not enough!" And summer begins sliding toward yeah, the werewood teeth yeah. bared. And Jojen gives no fucks and just keeps saying, when, said, I, yeah. "When I touched summer, I felt you in him, just as you are in him now." And Bran says, "I wasn't. I was in bed. I was sleeping." And he says, "You were in the godswood, all in gray." Uh, which before continuing with Jojen, uh, the all in gray struck me because I thought of Arya, who just got the gray shift in clothes yeah, at Hall. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's the wolf in sheep's clothing. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and that's what all in gray, like you were the wolf, but like it's also perfectly descriptive of Arya in Hall. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. wolf in kind of sheep's clothes. So I just thought that would like the. Different similarities that Bran is getting different attributes from is really interesting. But Jojen continues, I felt you. I felt you fall. Is that what scares you, Bran? The falling. And Bran finally confirms that he did, back in uh, Bran 2 or whatever it was, recognize Jamie yep. from his fall. And he says, the queen's brother, Jamie. Um, he thinks of him. But he, he doesn't want to tell them, just like he doesn't didn't tell Lewin or Roderick. He's hoping that if he suppresses it long enough, he'll just forget. Well, he thinks the Queen's brother, but it is the falling. The falling is what yeah, fucks absolutely. with him the most. And yeah, he if he 
doesn't bring it up, doesn't say it aloud, maybe it'll go away. And Jojen asks him, do you fall every night, Bran? And this is where Summer begins to growl, and there was no play in it. And he begins to stalk forward, and Mira steps between them and, call him off, Bran. And Bran's like, Jojen's making him angry. And, and Jojen. yeah, Jojen's like, no, just you, it's you. It's your anger that Summer is projecting. Your anger, Bran, your fear. Which is funny because he did just say he's getting angry like yeah. at his questions. And Bran thinks, I'm I'm not a wolf, but then he thinks, yet yeah, I did howl with them, and yeah. I do taste the copper blood in my mouth with the wolf dreams. And Jojen says, part of you is Summer, and part of Summer is you. You know this. And Summer rushes forward. Mira pokes out with the spear, and Bran just starts panicking, shouting for Summer. And Shaggy joins the fray. Yeah, all of a sudden comes A new fighter up. has appeared. <laughs> yeah, Shaggy comes up smelling Summer's rage. Yeah, and then starts getting crazy, too. Yeah, Mira orders Jojen up the tree, and Jojen... Today is not the day that I die. Like, this dude needs to stop smoking that herb yeah. and fucking relax for a minute. You know, he's too relaxed. He needs to get the fuck up in the tree, is what she tells him. Yeah. Like, no, I don't give a fuck what you think. Get in the tree. And he does, and she follows, grabbing, jumping up and grabbing a branch just as Shaggy tries to take a fucking chunk out of her leg and summer just sits down and howls yeah so bran then remembers that they're not alone and so he starts calling for hodor across the godswood who comes tromping on over like hodor does i didn't like this part and bran only remembers hodor when he needs him and i don't think that bodes well yeah it's not a good start um and hodor comes yeah trouncing over and just chases the dog the, the dire wolves around a bit kind yeah. of playing with them because they don't attack yeah him for he whatever does reason. it with glee he's stomping and shouting hodor and shaggy flees back into the foliage and summer lays back down beside bran and the reeds hesitantly climb down but jojen promises bran that they will talk again while never taking his eyes off Summer. Yeah, and Bran just immediately starts thinking, it was the wolves, it wasn't me, I didn't have anything to do with this. That No, no, maybe maybe Lewin was right, and we should keep them locked up in the God's Wood. And he decides, Hodor, I need a ride, bitch. Yeah, let's, let's go see Lewin. And so, as they're making their way across Winterfell, we're going to make our way to our small council chamber, and just fill you guys in on the deets real quick, and we'll let you get back in the episode. You do? What up? Welcome to the small council. Yo. So we're just going to feed you our socials, how you can get in touch with us if you want to write in, if you'd like to give us an inductee, or ask any questions, give any comments, whatever you think you'd like to write to us about. And so the usual way to do so is the email, withoutmannersbrotherhood at gmail.com. But we are also active on certain social medias. Yeah. Zach likes to frequent the Instagram, uh, at Carstark. No, wait, at Manners Without. Mm -hmm. uh, his Twitter is at Carstark92. Yeah. And I am on Twitter, at Manners Without. We have our Facebook group. Search us, Brotherhood Without Manners Podcast. But it could also be Facebook.com slash Brotherhood Podcast. If you would like the private Facebook group or access to... Uh, sample chapters, bonus episodes, early access to episodes sometimes, depending on how busy I am that week, um, go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash without manners, and we really appreciate it. It helps us continue what we're doing and making it as high quality as we can for you guys. That. Otherwise, we do always appreciate rates, reviews, subscribes, all that stuff. You can do it all over the internet. Very easy way is going to ratethispodcast.com slash brotherhood. And lastly, before we let you get back to the episode, if you use Stitcher or would like to, Stitcher. you can use code BROTHERHOOD to get a free one-month trial. That's of, pretty sweet. Yeah, Stitcher Premium. It's got beautiful features. It's great. You should try it. It's cool. Beautiful features. Beautiful Be features. Absolutely beautiful You're gonna features. You're going to want to draw it like one of your French girls. It's great. So check it out. Use the code, again, BROTHERHOOD, and we'll let you get back to the episode. Sweet. Ba -da -ba 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 -da. Mr. Lewin. That's how I'm going to transition to Lewin anytime now. Sweet. The Maester's turret below the rookery was one of Bran's favorite places, which I think is awesome because. All the ravens and crows? Well, like the. No, well, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I kind of overlooked that. Yeah. Uh, in, in lieu of because this is, this is me. 
Lewin's, uh, the description of Lewin's tower is a fucking old wizard's tower. There's books oh, and yeah. there's, you know, crazy plants and there's birds fluttering everywhere and it's loud and there's fucking scrolls to scribble on and there's quills and like, yeah, it's just, pots what and, is in this room, yeah. man? There's so much knowledge in here. And so I, I totally fucking related to that with Bran. I was like, yeah, this is sweet. And he finds Lewin writing at his desk because currently Lewin with Roderick off in the east is taking care of pretty yeah. much everything that Bran can't as a nine-year-old, nine-year-old kid. Yeah. And, and he's Lewin, like, oh, you're early for your lessons, Bran. Yeah, because we learned that, you know, him and Rickon and the Freys have... A few hours of lessons each afternoon um, yeah. given by, yeah, this, the fact that it's with the fucking phrase. Yeah, dude. Fucking like, they even have lesson. to go to school with him, basically. Ugh. And, yeah, Hodor carries uh, Bran over to a sconce where Bran lifts himself, and then Hodor carries him to a chair, and he tells Lewin that Mira claims her brother has the green sight, green dreams. And he's like, yeah, and I remember you saying the children of the forest had that power, remember? Remember? Yeah, and, he's, and Lewin basically gives him a pretty... Okay, yeah. yeah. Like there are some people who claim to have that power, but you know the the children of the forest, the the wise ones, they were known as green seers. So yeah, they there are people who say they could they could do that stuff. But at its heart, it was only a different sort of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Because so Bran asked this, if it was magic. This conversation, I have a lot to say about because Martin, I think, does something pretty cool here, where we are told one thing and expected to believe another, and it's. Pretty well done. Uh, Bran asks, so what was it? If it was just a different sort of knowledge, what was it actually? And Lewin says, no one truly knows. The children are gone and their wisdom gone with them. It had to do with the faces in the trees, we think. The first men believed that the green seers could see through the eyes of the werewoods, which is why they cut them down when it came to the warring with the children. The green seers supposedly also had power over the beasts of the wood, the birds in the trees, and supposedly the fish in the rivers. Does Jojen claim such powers? And he's like, nah. So, before we get too yeah, far, yeah. that's what Bran is doing. Yeah. That is exactly what he's doing. So far, uh, of note, we know he's warged into Summer, at the very least, right. at this point. We know eventually he will do it to Hodor. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that Lewin didn't even list. A people. A person. A, person, a yeah. people. A people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, and yeah, all of it, it has to do with the faces in the trees. That's, we know Bran will be, well... It's theorized that Bran will be speaking to Theon through the, the very werewood he was just at. Right. Doing the same green sight shit that Lewin is describing yeah. here. So, and so, yeah. And this is sort of what I was talking about. Lewin just gained a lot of credibility with the audience because this is stuff that we've come to know, or especially as a reread, we know will come to pass some of it. And so, like, yeah, he's telling them true. He's telling them straight here. This is probably what Lewin knows about it. And all of it, not holding nothing back. Uh, yeah, he does this weird complete flip-flop, too, to shut down the whole topic of it. But um, Bran tells him that, you know, no, he, Jojen doesn't have those kinds of abilities. But he does have dreams that sometimes come true, which he's only saying it that way because Mira slid in that sometimes. Yeah. And that sometimes for Mira is not an accurate sometimes. No. It's a biased one. She knows every green dream he has comes true. Yeah, the sometimes she's holding on to is that's, his death. That's her denial yeah. of his death. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes they come true, but not that last one. That last one was. Yeah. And Lewin mentions... Uh, All of us do. All of us have dreams yeah. that sometimes come true and then sometimes don't. You dreamed your father in the crypt before he died, remember? And he's like, well, Rickon dreamed the same dream as me, so that's kind of weird, huh? Yeah, and Lewin's like, yeah, that, and it, it very well may be green sight. But remember that just because you had that one dream, the tens of thousands that you and Rickon have had that you haven't shared and haven't come true, what about those? Like, Well, that's exactly it. Those were all before his fall, Lewin. Yeah. Like the fuck off his back. So he asks, do you recall what I've taught you of my chain? And he begins to kind of finger it, pulling for a link, and Bran states what the chain yeah, is, how yeah. it's forged, and all that, and Lewin turns it, showing Bran a Valerian steel link, and he says only one master in 100 has such a link, and it means that he has studied what the Citadel calls the higher mysteries, so or So he said one, magic. one meister in 100 years. Oh, 100 years? So is he the only one that currently has that? Marwin the Mage. And Marwin the Mage. Yeah. Those two. I Lewin, don't know if it's just those two, but, but I mean, it's unreliable narrator right. type thing. So do you think that Marwin the Mage is the friend he's going to be I about? do think that yeah, that is the friend. Yeah, me too. Um, he says, uh, 
it's a fascinating subject, but of small use. All who study it eventually try their hand at spells. I as well, I confess. I got nothing for my efforts, but it's sad to say magic does not work. But what boy doesn't dream of ha- finding hidden powers within himself? Right, right. And so, again, he kind of brings it back down to reality. You know, I studied it. I was you. I was this. I wanted to. I wanted to believe that I had these special dreams, that I could do this stuff. And then I tried. I read from a spell book. I did all the stuff, and nothing happened. So that's my experience with it. And... Now, I really like, uh, I'm going to mention it before I mention this next part of the chapter, that this chapter immediately precedes a Danny chapter. Yeah. Because the next thing he says is that, but sometimes magic works, because it works for the mages and the warlocks in the East. And just like I mentioned with the chains, I thought it was interesting that Danny's coming up a second time here, in my opinion. Yeah. But um, he, he shuts that down as well by saying, yes, some men do claim the power. But it doesn't mean any of it's true. I have a friend who could pull a rose out of your ear, but he's no more magical than I am. And so that's the one that we're thinking is is potentially Marwyn the mage. But I just, I really think it's interesting that Bran mentions the mages and warlocks when a magi is what screwed Daenerys. And now we have a warlock who's actually fucking with her in the House of the Undying. Yeah, magi and warlock. And he says that, you know... The, the the world is thousands of years old. Yeah, that gets uh, I'm into gonna, this crazy. I'm gonna. Uh, is that the one that ends like this? Yes. Okay. Cool. He says, uh, but still, there is much we do not know. And then I actually, I'm, I'm going to read a little bit of Lewin's because uh, I think this is such a poignant. I have thing stuff from him. to say about it. He says the years pass in their hundreds and their thousands, and what does any man see of life but a few summers, a few winters? We look at mountains and call them eternal, and so they seem. But in the course of time, mountains rise and fall, rivers change their courses, stars fall from the sky, and great cities sink beneath the sea. Even gods die, we think. Everything changes. And so, one, I mean, that is just a fact of life. Everything changes. Everything is in a constant state of flux. Even mountains that are here now cool. in a thousand years will be gone. So the part that really fucking grabbed my attention. The cities? No. Oh. Even gods die. Oh, yeah. We think. When he says we think, is that the Meisters of the Citadel? And does that mean that they they have come to some reasonable conclusion that gods can die? Is that Do they have some kind of an evidence that... That is something that has occurred. Why would he think that? Why would they, as a collective, think that? Um, I mean, I would say because there's a, a smattering of religious figures in Planetos that have risen and fallen, and and so just playing devil's advocate, it could be that. It could be all these. Well, different yeah, the fact that there's these, you know, the golden age N-E-T. heroes. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. Things that exist, the Jade existed, Empires, but there's not, and so technically they died they because died, they faded yeah. from reality. But, uh, or but it, it could be something where the Maesters believe the Seven are dead, which is a weird thing though that they would, because that means that they'd have to admit it. It exists. Well, that's what's interesting is here we're getting both the higher mysteries, magic, and the, the unreliable science, narrator, and religion. Oh, we're mixed getting into magic, one. science, and religion all in one man, one person. And so it's what bias is Lewin coming from? Is he, right. he drinking the Kool Aid of the Citadel and their kind of attempts to keep magic stifled, or is he? For the greater good and just wants the knowledge of what magic could be and what it does, or is he for the religion right. and glad the gods have no influence? It's it's all about yeah, ruin, and, it's crazy. and that's what's hard to tell. And so, no, I definitely thought it was interesting that he basically mentioned Valyria there yeah. falling into the sea. But and he does again. Maybe magic was once mighty, but no longer. What lingers is but a wisp of smoke. Valeria was the last ember, and Valeria is gone. Then he says the incorrect part. Yes. Dragons are no more, the giants are dead, and the children and their lore forgotten. So everything he just said was fact until the last statement, which we as readers know to be incorrect. He tells Bran that green seers are known for looking out of the werewoods, that all this knowledge was lost when the children were lost. Giants are dead. The well that's the part that's incorrect. Oh, I thought you said that, that was... No, no, that's the part that's incorrect. Uh, the 
uh, the chain, him studying oh, the spells, yeah, yeah, yeah. the magic, the warlocks of Karth, the mages that call themselves. All of this has been accurate up until this point to Lewin. And so... So does that mean that even the gods die part? I believe so. Yeah. I And that's what's interesting is we're being told here that not everything he says can be trusted because we know dragons there are dragons. Are Dr- giants do exist. We, the children aren't gone. So we we don't have any... I mean, rereaders, we know giants yeah. exist. I'm, I'm not saying what, yeah, I'm a first okay. read No, yeah, no, no. So, so yeah, Lewin absolutely. is incorrect here yeah. at the end. But everything else he says makes sense and is coming from a, a structured, well-thought-out argument of, I've tried it before. It didn't work for Lewin for whatever reason. See, and that's what's but so But now cool. we have dragons. And that's what I wonder is... You know, only one in a hundred uh, years is there a Meister who has that Valyrian steel link. Uh, thousands try, others, you know, have will will try. Yeah. And so do you think that if a Meister tries it now, spells may work? Now um, the dragon is rising, or the dragons have been reborn. I think for people appears. like Marlin, Marwyn the Mage, it's always, it's been a Melisandre-esque I can tap into yeah. little bits and stuff. So I think that, like, Marwin the Mage, who, as we know, is going to be heading to help Danny. I feel like he's got some shit. Well, because like, it was, some... I mean, in, in the, to forge your link, we know you have to do the glass candle yeah, thing. Yeah, you have to try to light and it. And the whole point of that is to learn that you can't light it, that it's impossible to light. You have to sit in the darkness and, and kind of stew. Unless and now it's lit. Unless you have a magical means of doing so. And so... That's also probably why one maester in 100 fails, because right. they don't pass that trial. So, yeah, I'm sure that many, many try, but it's who knows if now there would be an influx of people actually succeeding. Succeed, right. And so he says, uh, no, my prince, Jojen does not have the green sight flat out in Bran. We, uh, we get no a jump cut. No living man does. Yeah, no living man does. But yeah, exactly. Now we get cuts. a jump cut as Bran Mira! is telling Mira all this as they sat by the point. window, uh, and he's apologizing for the wolves earlier and all that. And she says, "Well, perhaps your maester is wrong." And Bran is like, "No, yeah. no, father listened to him. He heeded his counsel." And she and I love this. She says, "Your father listened. I don't doubt." But in the end, he decided for himself. That. That's such a fucking cool line. That's, like, that's, it's so Ned and yeah, accurate. Yeah. Just, yeah, he will listen to your counsel. He will hear what you have to say. But Ned's going to make Ned's decision. Yep. And that's how Ned did things. That's and why I'm Ned's sure dead. that that comes from Howland. Oh, yeah. That's what Howland, you know, I, I, I never swayed Ned Stark. I would tell him, this is what I believe is right. This is what I believe is wrong. And I knew in his heart he would do what he believed was right. And so I think that's just sort of the the generational yeah, getting passed yeah. down. Yeah, Bran immediately is like, what? Uh, no, like, what are, you, what are you talking about? And she decides to mention another dream that Jojen has had. And in this dream, instead of servants bringing the meal to Bran, Lewin is bringing him his meal in the Great Hall. And everybody's there, including the phrase, and he gets the the king's choice, the the lord's portion, and it looks fucking amazing. But the phrase get nasty, gray, dead, rotting meat. And yet, for some reason, the phrase enjoyed their meals way more than Bran does. And Bran's like, um, huh? The fuck? I don't I don't get it. And she's like, right. My brother says that you will. And when you do understand, that's when we'll talk again. Do you recall the what that what that is? What the the, the dream is? The green green dream that he, she just described. It comes up next chapter. So, why are you looking at me crazy and not saying any words? I don't like because you just threw a lot of questions at me. Uh, no, I don't. Off the top of my head, no, I don't recall what's next chapter with these. I was just seeing if you wanted to describe it at all. So essentially, that green dream that he doesn't understand because he ends up going to dinner and is freaking the fuck out, and nothing happens. He's like, I don't know, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. But that's talking about next chapter or maybe the chapter after. I don't know which chapter specifically, but um, he's going to receive the news that uh, Rob won a battle. But the the phrase will also receive news that um, which phrase and one of the phrase dies, and so while that sounds like bad news to us, we know that the phrase if a fray dies, everybody moves up in succession. And so I think it was like uh, Stefan Frey, like mm-hmm. one of the one of the top in succession, which means that all the phrase get to 
oh, that means we're even more, we're higher up in the ranks now. So they enjoyed the news more, but Rob had won his battle, but it's like kind of a, oh, yay, like one more battle, but we're still going to war. So he'll, and they'll come straight to him and be like, remember, that's the green dream. It comes out weird. You might not expect how it happens, but, and that, so that's what it is, is full spoiler. So, but. uh, why is Lou in the servant? Because he gives them the bird, the, the letter. So he's the one that delivers the news to them. And so he's the servant feeding them the meal. I, I'm not satisfied with that. I don't like that. It, that, I know it said like I I rem- I recall them saying it that it doesn't but like yeah that one's like not a debatable there's like, what do you more see I mean there's the more way? to this like the red wedding I get the thing the phrase meat is dead and gray at dinner they have dead the, the dead meat of the Starks and and it's more way more pleasant for them the rare bloody meat for Bran of the wolf where it's like bleeding on the plate and it's just succulent and it's reminding me of his wolfness I don't know it just it just seems that's so simple, and I don't know. I want more from this one, I guess. Yeah, I think you're but, reaching. I mean, that's I'm not okay. saying there is anything. I'm saying I want there to be. It feels like it's a, a deeper dream than just Bran, Rob wins a battle, the phrase get to rise up in rank. Because, like, I mean, they're still at Winterfell. It's not like these two fucks, you know. Are going to march yeah, down. Yeah, I mean to, that's just how the phrase. But it, yeah, yeah, works. it's just it feels deeper to me, and I'm not satisfied with that ending. Fuck well, you, you know, Mira and Jojen. I'm <laughs> well, going with unreliable narrator. They're wrong. Well, Bran is uh, he's not having it either because he says, you know what, Lewin had the right of it. Yeah. There's nothing bad coming to Winterfell. Laws, my sweet summer child. And he says, as long as there's magic, anything could happen. But alas, there is no magic, and he would never walk or fly or be a knight. Um, uh, he. He said, uh, if magic existed, anything could happen. Ghosts could walk, trees could talk, and broken boys could grow up to be knights. Yeah, uh... True? True. To be determined. Ghosts can walk. Beric Dondarrion is up and about. Well, not to mention the ghost in Winterfell eventually well, like, will be... Well, like, legit dead people coming back. Yeah, Stoneheart, yeah, yeah. Beric Dondarrion are... Right, confirmed. Ghosts to that can whites, walk. Technically. Trees that can talk. Theon and Bran. Yeah, werewoods. Yeah, yeah. Uh fucking the uh, ghost of high heart yeah. uh, trees that can talk type thing and then broken boys that could be knights that's sort of the him to be determined but it could also be Theon Theon it, uh, I mean Hodor Ho- right I mean there could be a lot of people if you re- you know want to go with the uh, unisex Brienne you know broken right, absolutely. You know, broken so boys. it's so now my thought about this was he says anything is possible if magic were real but it's not nope we know it is, yeah. or at least that, it's like, because there's dragons, yeah. yeah, and so anything is possible means that, like, it's it's being said right there, yeah. and anything is possible with the ma- if magic is real, and Martin is throwing that in our face, like, if ma- if magic's real, then I can do what I want with the world, like. I like the way he set the scene up because he says, "But there isn't," and he says it to the darkness of his bedroom, yeah, which makes me feel like there is something that hears him, that. He is saying that to someone. They're like, there isn't magic, and something somewhere is kind of just chuckling yeah, at him, yeah. like, "Oh, you poor bastard!" Like Patchface. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there is no magic, and the stories are just stories. And he would never walk, nor fly, nor be a knight. And that is the end of Brand Four. And god damn it, these Brand chapters just get more yeah. fucking intense and more intense with these reads. I can't handle it. Sweet. So who's your inductee? My inductee is a little grandfather, of course. Of course. It's got to be. Okay. I I just, it's got to be. The moss-colored eyes. Yeah. The way he, when he's talking to you, he seems to be looking past you. Like, he's not seeing you. He's seeing something else. It's kind of giving us this foresight onto Brendan Rivers or the three-eyed crow when we get to him. Yeah. Where it's like he's not even seeing you, but it's just so mild of that. And then he's got that solemn, quiet voice, but... You're fucking listening to everything he says. It's sort of the reverse Roose Bolton, yeah. where Roose Bolton, it's terrifying. Jojen, you're more like, wait, what was that? Yeah. It's Green We're gonna Seer die? versus Vampire. Yeah. So, um, awesome. You're inductee. My inductee is going to Shaggy Dog. 
And it's because he didn't know what the fuck was going on. But he's like, yo, you fuck, you fucking with my brother? You fucking, you fucking with my brother? And then so he just, I mean, granted, he's just being a savage. But no, I'm giving it to Shaggy Dog for being a badass and having his brother's back like mine never does. And I appreciate that in a person. Do you think it's significant that the Reeds aren't spending much time with Rickon? Yeah. So I think, because what's weird for me is... I think Rickon is also a green seer. I definitely think he has the capabilities. He doesn't have any guidance. He's going to have uh, Asha, Osha doing it. And I think that's good. That's good for him as a to be a capable fighter and green seer. She'll definitely lead him is down to Is it because of sight. his rage? Do you think he's not tempered enough to be what Bran needs I to be? I think that's what it is, is that Bran has to serve a specific purpose regarding the green sight, and Jojen's dreams are being fed by the three-eyed crow specifically, and so they're kind of both see, being See, because I don't led. know if I see... I don't know if... See, I don't think uh, Rickon is like a green seer with the visions. I, I think he's more of just a warg. Right, but the yeah, connection so that the Starks ha- give them sort of visions, like Ned Stark dying, yeah. they get families in trouble. No, kind of I should have sense. mentioned. I prefer. So I think, I think it's more going to be this island of cannibals. He comes back and he's this savage, badass warg. Yeah, jumping in and out of shaggy, and that's but popping why out sword he couldn't fighting. become the Three Eyed Raven because he's got this rage that yeah, he harnesses through definitely. Shaggy. Um, but it's still interesting that Jojen and Mira really aren't. He's the werewolf that's going to counter Roose Bolton's Dracula. He's not on their radar at all. I'm ignoring that. <laughs> anyway, those were our inductees. We did get an inductee from our favorite French fry, Julian. And it's an outstanding inductee. And he says, uh, it's really simple. Inductee, Jojen, because Jojen stuff. Can't wait for Bran to get this particular meal. Yes! And see him realize it for all the truth of it. Oh, yes. Keep the brand chapters coming for now. I love them. Julian... All right, so I'm going to jump in and steal this one real quick. I know you were referring to the meal right here with the phrase, but the fact that you lined that so perfectly with Jojen specifically. Now, I know you're not this far in just yet, but here comes full spoiler. It hurts. Jojen's going to get killed. And he's gonna be turned into a little bloody paste this isn't that confirmed. Bran licks out of a wooden bowl so that he can trip balls and learn how to see like the three. It's not crow. confirmed. It's a theory. But it's called Jojen paste, it, and let me tell you, it sounds like you're already foreshadowing that in your uh, inductees. So thank you for such a wonderful inductee, and for the fact that you accidentally, I think, alluded to him being Jojen paste. It hurts. He says, for now, I love these brand chapters. See you later. Valar Jojen Redarius. Yes. Which I think is your best one yet. Uh, yeah, Jojen, for Jojen stuff. That's just it, perfectly. Yeah. Um, now, regardless of the fact that I just went on that rant, I adore Jojen. Everyone should. If you don't, you're bad. Again, that's a theory. It's not confirmed that yeah. Jojen is made into bloody paste, but uh, it's pretty strong. Once okay. you get there, yeah, we'll discuss it more. But anyway, those are our thoughts. That was Julian's inductee. Thank you, and Julian, for writing in. And uh, next episode, we are going to be reading Tyrion eight. Yeah, actually, next episode, I think did I do it backwards? Next episode is the. Yeah, we did. We started the episode. My bad. That comes out next week on Monday, the Joe Buckley episode. You're the fucking worst. Hey, man, you uh, you went along with it, but it's okay. So the next episode will be our interview with Joe Buckley about the Great Castles of Westeros. Go buy that book. It is wonderful. The episode after that, which is a week from today, I probably didn't write down. You know why? Because it's on uh, Patreon for early access. You're probably That's what's confusing yeah. me. Yes, that's what it so, is. So, yeah, Sorry. you may have heard it by the time you've heard this episode. True. But uh, for... Everyone else who is not on Patreon, that episode will be releasing after Soon, yeah. this brand so four one. So after that will be Tyrion 7. It's not, it's not 8? It Tyrion is seven? 7. It is oh, 7. Oh, whoops. Yeah. yeah. So seven. get us your inductees for it Tyrion seven. 7. We're a mess. We're sorry. We're You're a mess. Oh, I've got okay. my shit together. I'm a mess. I'm sorry. Anyway, we'll catch you on the next episode. Valor, Jojen, Redarius. Peace. Peace.